Hey, how's it going everyone? Chris Strider here, back at it again, and this time we have a pretty special revisit. Recently, I did the 2600X with the 1080 build, and that kind of gave birth to the idea of, um, is the 1080 still worth it in 2021 when it comes to gaming and light productivity work? So basically, this video that you're watching right now is rendered on the 1080. Does it still hold up? Let's find out. And just before we actually get into the specs of the 1080, kind of like a quick historical reference of it. Basically, this card is definitely worth it if you still have it. Now, the used market, by all means, is quite a mess at the moment. Um, not as much as the new market, so to speak, so we buy brand new cards, obviously. But when it actually comes to the used market, a lot of people are putting prices up just to make some money and it just seems to be the normal trend at the moment it's not going to be settling anytime soon until demand is restored around the world but here in australia specifically we're not as affected as much because we're a smaller market so you can actually find these deals very competitively so if you can find a local 1080 uh, card in your area so to speak or anywhere around australia and if you can get it for a good price i picked this one up here for 300 dollars of my city up here in the territory and i'm very happy with it essentially like so we're definitely going to be finding out if it's worth it in 2021 but we'll just go over the quick specs of this card uh it has 2506 cuda cores and got a base clock of around 750 megahertz i'm really trying to think if the 10 gigabyte memory speed with the 8 gigabytes of ddr r5x ram is worth in 2021 and for most games yes it's really hard to pinpoint um games like cyberpunk and watchdogs legions particularly cyberpunk because it's not optimized well but it is the most graphically intensive game that is showing the trend of future games moving forward any 1060 1070 1080 owner that's just playing 1080p um gaming just keep your card until prices return to normal but for the actual 1080 right here uh 1440p seems to be a real sweet spot when it comes to not the most demanding titles but most titles out there so i would say about 80 percent of games the gtx 1080 can actually run just fine or 60 frames per second but we're going to get right into the gaming benchmarks let me know what you think in the comment section down below if you have a 1080 and if you're happy with your purchase from five years ago if this card is just absolutely bonkers I, I just can't believe it just has withstood the test of time and i'm really happy that this card is still relevant today and um any 1060 1080 owner that has invested and even 1080 ti those guys are just laughing to the bank right now and we're going to be re reviewing that one in the weeks to come so stay tuned for that anyways let's get into the gaming benchmarks and then i'll have my closing thoughts for the 1080, highly positive as you already know. Let's get right to it. Definitely worth it in 2021. All right, so we're just gonna get right into the Cyberpunk 1080p benchmark for the GTX 1080 Zeus. Once again, just go over the spec of my current system, which is a 5600X with an X570 motherboard. Uh, I think for Cyberpunk 2077, at high settings, graphic settings on high, I believe this game really falls into this bracket where you'll get anywhere between 40 and 60 frames a second on high settings. I do not believe in maxing out gaming graphics because you just get diminishing returns. So we'll just go for a bit of a drive here and we'll be testing medium and high settings at 1080p and 1440p and then we'll make an assessment with other gaming benchmarks as well which include uh, Star Wars and plenty of other games altogether. But Overall, I am quite impressed with how the GTX 1080 is actually holding up. The frame time is definitely stable around the 25 millisecond uh, time frame. And also the 5600X is not showing any bottleneck whatsoever. So it shows that this CPU with any kind of 10 series graphics card can really utilize the 1080 really well with the year 2021. So we'll just go for a drive a bit more. And then we're gonna switch to medium settings and we're gonna see how much extra FPS if we can get 60 frames stable. So we're gonna go straight into settings. As you can see here, we had higher settings. And I'm not gonna really worry about the presets because you can't really use DLSS or ray tracing. So just using the medium or high presets 
It's just a quick way of benchmarking. So we'll just let it stabilize a little bit. The reason is because I'm using Streamlabs here to record. So we are taking about a 5% performance hit with the NVIDIA codec recording this gameplay. Um, but as you can see here, now we're hitting 60 frames stable, which is really ideal. And the frame time has definitely come down to a respectable 15 to 20 milliseconds, which is kind of really ideal what you or what you really want out of your graphics card, where you'll get minimal stuttering and you know no frame tearing or uh, any sort of uh, performance hit, so to speak. So. I'm really liking the medium settings and there's not a real big difference between medium or high. But uh, we're gonna jump into other games now. And before that, we'll just go into the 1440p uh, gaming benchmark. Anyways, we're gonna go back to 1440p high and medium settings. And we're gonna go with high for now. We're just gonna use the quick preset here. And we're gonna drive around. All right, so as you can see here, the GTX 1080 is definitely being pushed to its limit and we're starting to get very minor stuttering and we're hitting around 30 milliseconds in terms of um, frame time, which is not really ideal because now we're getting like a console-like experience. I don't know if you can really tell, but I'm not getting as smooth um, experience, so to speak. So now we're going into a more busier area and uh, it's definitely taking a dip into the mid 20s and this is not ideal here so we're just going to take a turn here and we're just trying to make the game you know really load into very tough graphical areas so you get a simulated experience if you're using the 1080 and right now the milliseconds is kind of just going all over the place and the game is really pushing this graphics card to the limit it's at 99% utilization and its VRAM is around the 7 gigabyte margin. As you can see here, the codec is taking a bit of it as well. And the 5600X is not really being challenged because it's such a beast of a CPU, but it's really hard to get your hands on it. So we're getting around 25 to 30 frames per second on 1440p high. I'm hoping we change it to medium settings and we'll get 40 frames stable. That's kind of like the goal here which is kind of like my minimal FPS requirement for uh, 1440p. Ideally, you want to get closer to 50, but not everyone has a graphics card like a 3060 Ti or 3080 or a 6800. A lot of us have a 1080 or a 1080 Ti, but all the more common 1060. Let me know what you think. If you have a 1060, I think it's probably the most popular graphics card ever, just because it was a new generational card. We're getting a bit off track, so we'll get back right into the game. Now we're hitting 35 frames and the game is a bit more smooth now. What we'll do is we'll try to load into another area, really play it on low settings because you want to enjoy that uh, immersive experience, so to speak. So in the less uh, graphical areas, we're definitely hitting 40, 45 frames, which is ideal, but when we get to those intense areas where there's a lot of post-processing um, it definitely goes below 40. so now we're going to load into another game all right so we've loaded into gta 5 and we're actually going to run obviously a 1440p uh benchmark and where is it oh really don't like the scroll uh and we're gonna just run high settings first and then medium settings. I really hate changing this, this manually, so to speak. Um, so this is pretty much what a lot of people would play GTA on. And we'll use the NVIDIA for soft shadows. So we'll get a, kind of like an, that. We'll just go softer, softer soft shadows. And we'll go eight uh, filtering with high ambient occlusion and I well and unfortunately this is probably going to kick us out and we're just going to kind of talk about how GTA 5 is probably one of my favorite games of all time and it's definitely a classic for a region I can't believe I can't believe I'm calling this game a classic and I haven't released GTA 6 yet this game has been out for nearly eight no seven years yeah, six, seven years ago, this game was released. That is crazy. 
Anyways, so with high settings on 1440p, we're getting anywhere between 60 and 100 frames high per second. Settings, you're d definitely getting the most optimal experience where you're averaging anywhere from 80 to 100 frames and then on 1080p, 100 frames plus, 100 frames to 144 FPS. You can't really ask for more than that. So, uh, the GTX 1080, man, what can I say? This just this graphics card is just so good. I'm just a real fan of the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti. When the people invested in that card, uh, when they came out, and the MSRP was quite respectable, but the 1080 Ti was definitely a bit of a stretch, but everyone that grabbed a 1080 that can't grab, grab a new graphics card today, it's really like, it's looking more and more as an investment for 1080 and 1080 Ti users because it's just worked out so much in their favor. They're able to play 1080p and 1440p games without much difficulty. Let's tweak the settings a little bit and you're pretty much good to go. All right, so we're gonna use Total War Warhammer uh, as a 1440p benchmark as well uh, for the GTX 1080. And we're gonna see how it actually holds up. So we're just gonna go into graphics advanced and we're just going to change all these to advanced. high and we're going to run a benchmark and we'll watch this and we'll run the scape and benchmark here as a uh as a benchmark or the standard benchmark for total war because it seems to be a very intense benchmark for the actual game and it's frozen on me right now so i'm just hoping it kicks back up into gear all right, so 1440p Total War Warhammer 2 with the Skaven benchmark on the GTX 1080. Um, fray time is definitely respectable. We're averaging around 20 milliseconds and the FPS is anywhere between 50 and 60 frames. And this is probably really good. I wasn't expecting this result uh, coming out of the GTX 1080 on high settings of 1440p. So 1080p high settings, gonna knock it out of the park 1440p settings medium preset is definitely going to hit it out of the park as well and we're going to be averaging about 55 frames so i'm very impressed with the gtx 1080 in this uh benchmark it just seems to hold up very well even in an intense game like total war warhammer 2 where it is slightly more cpu intensive so you could argue the 5600x is actually helping out this uh, graphics card in terms of IPC performance uplift, but because we're playing at 1440p high settings uh, for this benchmark, the GPU was more influenced than the CPU. So if we ran a 1080p benchmark, we'd definitely average closer to 100 frames per second. Okay, so now we've loaded into Star Wars and we're just gonna run a 1440p um, benchmark we'll for this one to the video. And this is all on epic settings so what we'll do is we'll just change everything to high because epic i don't believe in maxing out settings because you just get diminishing returns and we'll just change that to high and that will be it for that one uh we're just going to load into this game right now as you can see here we're averaging 100 frames on 1440p high settings so this game on the GTX 1080 can just handle itself really well. I'm having a vision, ladies and gentlemen. So 1440p high settings, this game can just absolutely hit it out of the park on the 5600X. The GTX 1080 is no slouch whatsoever. Oh my gosh. And we'll pretty much wrap that wrap this benchmark review uh, for the GTX 1080. Uh, all right, so that wraps up the real-time gaming benchmarks with a 5% performance hit. So expect 5% more performance in terms of FPS and memory allocation to your games as we were using Streamlabs once again to use the NVIDIA codec resources to record this footage. Now, it was a bit unfortunate that my capture card died a couple of weeks ago. Haven't bothered to replace it yet. And I just feel like Streamlabs and just recording software has come so far that it's nearly become redundant to actually have um, capture cards, so to speak, unless you're actually streaming to another PC or you have a dedicated streaming PC. But for actually capturing game footage, not so much. So the 1080 in 2021, this card still hits like a truck. Like 
especially the 1080 Ti, but the 1080, the second abbreviation of the 10 series, god damn this card is absolutely amazing value even for this year and right now just the way games are being projected just there's no real reason to update your graphics card unless you want to go above 1080 game and this is definitely the sweet spot for high refresh rate 1080p gaming or 60 frames per second and 1440p gaming and it's not a 4K gaming card by any stretch of the means. Even the 1080 Ti would struggle in that area, but it has, it does have 11 gigabytes of VRAM, so it can definitely uh, support those titles at least around the 30 to 60 frame marks, depending on that title, of course. But the 1080, especially this Strix boy right here, definitely worth your money. 2021, everyone that owns this card, just keep it. Wait for the prices to return to normal and I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick revisit and let us know what you think in the comment section down below. If you really like my content, trying to get into a groove, trying to figure out what kind of stuff I want to create, I really put emphasis on value for money, bang for buck is my signature saying so to speak, but let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Give us a like and subscribe. Join the channel, join the fun, and this is Chris Strider clocking out. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time wherever you are around the world, and I'll see you guys in my next video.